here should be a tooth. I think we got one. Locking pin engaged on the crank. Locking pin engaged on the cam. Good morning all. This is not the next mini video I was hoping it was going to be. Um, had a nice week away on holiday, came home yesterday, um, nipped out in my car and on the way home it stopped. Um, it made a very cam belty, fully offy kind of sound. Um, and uh, the drive pin or tooth or whatever you want to call it on the cam wheel decided that it had had enough. And it made a noise for a little while, on and off. Couldn't locate it, it sounded like tappets. So it was probably that being loose and chattering. So I fixed that, started the car, figuring that, well, if, if there's any bent valves, it can't, they can't get more bent if everything's timed up. Um, and we've got at least one bent valve. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna put it apart. Probably not much talking today just following the process, um, probably on time lapse as well, but I will uh, cover what I can when I can, but basically it's Sunday today, I need the car for work Monday afternoon, so <sighs> onwards. Okay, that's an hour. Um, a bit fiddly, but I have done this before, so it's kind of just remembering where everything came from, where it goes, how it comes off. Um, that's about 
I learned from last time that this is held in by a impossibly long 16 mil bolt on the bottom of the bell housing. So drop that out, this drops away, manifold comes off because I took it off all in one go last time. It's a bit of a pig with the uh, power steering pump there. Um, hardest bit was probably the uh, hose back here for the heater that heads off this place. Out. It's in there now. It's just impossible to kind of get on the uh, constant pressure clips. But yeah, drain the water off. I'll let it drain off from it now, go and have a cup of tea. And um, then it's time to pull the top off. But I mean, to give you an idea of everything that's come off, where they are, it's a bit fiddly, but you can get the injector rail out with the manifold in place. Some people say you have to kind of take them off together. Mm, you don't. It's fiddle, but you can do it. So uh, just making sure I keep the, uh, the tank breather and the fuel pipe up high so it doesn't try and drain itself off. I'm on a bit of a slope here and uh, I've got a, an absolutely full tank of juice. So yeah, there we go. There's the, uh, the pile of bits and the pile of tools so far. Time for a coffee and then head will be off before Euro car parts open. Okay, um, I thought I'd actually show you this bit in real time because it's kind of important um, to get the engine timed up before you pop the cam belt off um, and lift the head off because once the head comes off, do not turn the engine or you'll pop the liners out and um, that doesn't end up so well, that, that, that ends up quite bad and quite expensive. Um, so that's a take the engine apart job to put them back in, unless you're a real cowboy. So um, I'm going to show you the locking tools I use. There are proper tools available. Obviously, I don't use them um, because there are really cheap and simple alternatives. So yeah, let's spin this around. For locking the crank, I use a bit of brake pipe. It's, what are we looking at here? Maybe five mil across max. Could be six, you know, six mil maybe. I'm not going to measure it because it's not important. It's a bit of brake pipe. It goes down here in a hole just there. Now, likelihood is it's not going to uh, slide straight into the pin. What you need to do is get your 22 mil socket on the crank pulley down this end and spin it around until that drops in. Now, spin the engine around and get one arm over there holding that. So gradually turn the engine around whilst holding that pin in. Bit bit. There you go. That won't turn any further that way. And it won't turn any further back that way either. Okay, so it's locked, but the locating pin for the cam is over that side. It needs to be here. There's a hole in the head. You probably can't see it, but just, but just here. So I'm 180 degrees out, so I've got to pull that back out and wind the engine around again. There we go, turned a little bit, let's put it back in. There you go, that's the bolt. It goes in like that, lines up in a hole on the engine, on the head. So as long as those two points are lined up, it's safe to take everything else apart. Um, I just want to see how bad the head is to get some parts ordered so I can um, crack on with the rest of it. Um, so the proper method would be jack the car up, you take the inner arch liner out, you can pop this cover off, undo the tensioner, cam belt off, because you've got to put it all back together. And if you're doing this, you may as well put a new cam belt and tensioner and water pump on it. Um, but yeah, that's the, the gist of it. I think you've got 
these through here you can then lift this whole mount out of the way if you really want to i don't usually there we go just a quick note on tools you'll notice the head bolt here is a six pointy star kind of backwards torx it is a female torx bolt there is a proper tool to do that this is an e14 socket and obviously that will bite on at all however if you are in an absolute pickle have to get this undone and can't find the proper tool locally you can use an 11 mil socket it has to be a single hex but down there somewhere a single hex 11 mil socket also fits these but be really careful and it's an emergencies only kind of job okay let's get the head off Peugeot displaying the ultimate in cost saving here. The head bolts hold down the rocker gear. The rocker gear sits on the cam, the head and the cam cannot be, uh, you can't change the cam unless the head comes off because it won't go out that way. And you've just got this one set of bolts holding everything in. Um, they are stretch bolts. You should replace them every time. Um, they're only 20 quid for a set, so it just makes sense to do that. Um, but hopefully, There is the rock gear. I just can't seem to put it down. There we go. One sit on the head, and I can see a mark for a couple of valves here. Ooh, right. There appears to be a mark here, and another one here. Oh, I think we've escaped here and here. I'm going to uh, go and turn this over somewhere else because. I've got this lovely pool of oil here. I'll have to make a mess when you um, try and tip it up and see. Okay, I've spun it over, and I think it is just the one bent valve. You can see uh, this one here is not sitting flush. All the others appear to be down, sealed, flush. Here you can see here, this is where the contact happened, and it's bent the valve that way it looks like there may well have been contact here as well and here and possibly here and possibly here so obviously there's quite a bit of checking to do but um yeah i'm gonna clear a space in the garage and get me a headstand set up <laughs> 